Just Be an Earnest podcast is proudly presented by Traeger Grills. And if I'm just being earnest, I love my Traeger. I had one before they wanted to sponsor the podcast. I'm a day one Traeger and guy, okay? I got the 885, little joints, a hot little piece. It's so easy to use and everything I cook tastes amazing. Specifically, my bacon bush light beer soaked brown sugar bacon burgers, <clears throat> which is my specialty. I absolutely love my Traeger. It's so simple, versatile, and has a superior flavor from cooking with 100% natural wood. This barbecue season grill with flavor. Grill with a Traeger wood pellet grill. Once you experience Traeger wood fire taste, you will not want to go back to cooking with gas and charcoal. Just how it is. Traegers are easy to use. There's no need to constantly prod, poke, and flip your food. Just load up the hopper with 100% natural wood pellets, set your cooking temperature like you would an oven, and let Traeger signature heat and smoke do the rest. Look, with Traeger 6-in-1 versatility, you can do it all. We're talking about grilling, smoking, baking, roasting, braising, and barbecuing, from burgers to brownies, everything in between, pulled pork to pizza, you guessed it, okay? Smoke cocktails. There's no limit to what a Traeger can do. So you purchased a car. Yes. And it had a Glock already in it. In it. Did we figure out who the owner was? It a, were the serial numbers just yeah. well, gone? No, the serial number was on there. Was it hot? I mean, it was. Uh, so we took it to the sheriff's department. <laughs> I'll probably get in trouble for all this. Um, and it belonged to a guy who was on the most wanted list. Wow. So and you're a rat. Just be in earnest. Just be in earnest. Just be in earnest. Just be in earnest. What uh? What songs did you play? Lord, ah, uh, we did things, man. Ought to know. Yeah. Did dirty looks. Yeah. We did, L.A. and Neon Diamonds. It's what? been a long damn day. Yeah, it has. I'm, we're tracking songs. Me and Haley Witters are doing like a six song, seven song thing cool we've been tracking at blackbird i came over here doing this i'm going back there after that she it's gonna be awesome busy it's man. Like kenny rogers dolly parton type yes our first one is gonna be islands in the stream cover and it's super dope Dude. we did it like uh kind of like neon moon casey yes so it's kind of like we call it country politan i guess i don't know that's not that's not what it's called but that's kind of the vibe of it my gosh i'm such a huge Haley witters fan me too. She's good. She's like, she's good. Yeah, got the I'm aesthetic down. She does. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be fun. So yes, it's been a busy day. Yes. That's what we do. The world is spinning again. We're feels working. nice. It feels weird. Yeah, I love it though. I do too. I love it. Are I you? Was... Uh, are you playing any shows this summer? We're playing a few. Yeah, we got some stuff coming up in June. Um, yes. We just got back off the road last week. Shoot, we did like. Five shows or so out west. Oh yeah, wait. Who are you with? You just did. Uh, you just with did. Justin Moore and Tracy Lawrence, I and we that. did Islands in the Stream. I saw that. How was that? Like a full cap, full capacity thing? What was that? Yeah, weren't they all full capacity? I believe. I believe so. I mean, it was everybody was out there was just rocking and rolling. Everybody's and was, ready to go right now, dude. People are going to show up for concerts. It's going to be good. Yes. What a time to be alive. What a time to be alive. Um, yeah. So like I said, welcome to the podcast, uh, Lainey Wilson, everybody. Uh, what do you want to talk about? What do you got coming up? You got some new music coming out? Oh shoot, man. Well, we just put a record out. You did just put a, a month and a out. half ago. So yeah. So it'll be three years before you're able to drop more. Exactly. Music. <laughs> so in, uh, 20, 20, hundred. Yeah. yeah. 20, 20, <laughs> That's no. a, there's your quote. 20, 20, hundred. No. Yeah. So yeah, a month and a half ago, we put the record out and it's doing well. Yeah. I love things a man I know. I was in the parking lot when you and Hardy shotgun that beer uh, for Dear promo God. stuff of it. <laughs> I still need to take some lessons. Yeah. I was going to say. It wasn't, it wasn't that good. It wasn't, your, it best, wasn't, no, it wasn't, wasn't. your best shotgun moment probably. I've shotgunned a few more since then, so I guess I'm probably a little better since then. But yeah. if anybody could teach me, I guess it's him. Hell, uh, I'm sure. Who who shotguns better, you or him? Um, him. 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 <laughs> You gotta add a few extra syllables in there. I'm gonna whoop your ass too. H e e u m. <laughs> Ham. Ham. Yeah, Hardy probably shotguns better. I'm not. I don't pride myself on being a great shotgunner. I, 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 I drink longevity. You know. Okay, that's what it's about. Yeah, it's not about how fast. It's how much. No, and <laughs> I put that thing up on TikTok, 
you should have seen all the hate comments. I'm like, look. Oh, that's what it's. I didn't. For. I didn't say I could shotgun a beer good. Yeah. At least I gave it a shot. A shotgun. Mm. See what I did there? Yeah. No, and I I commend you for that. And there, I'll tell you what, I've seen a lot of worse attempts at shotgunning. Yeah. Like. It and then it went down the wrong pipe, and you know how that is. It's like hate that down the wrong goozle, and it's just goozle. bad. It was just bad. I just hate it when it goes down the wrong goozle. <laughs> you are so from Baskin, Louisiana. Yep, I am. Three hundred like, people. Three hundred people. Yes. Yes. Two ninety nine now. That's right. Two ninety nine now. Like yep. how many people were in your class in high school? Well, I had to go over to the town next to me to gotcha. actually go to high school. So it was twenty four though. It was 24, my graduating class. Everybody knew everything about everybody. Oh, my God. Oh, that's dangerous. Real dangerous. Real dangerous. What yeah. year did you graduate high school? 10. 10? I was 11. You were 11? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to figure, because I went to a private Christian school, and everybody knew everything, yeah. and there was like 100 kids in my grade. I cannot imagine. 24. And I mean, from pre-K to 12th grade, we had 200 students, so we had the biggest class. Christ. Did you date everybody in your grade? Heck no. I I chose one. I figured out he was not my cousin <laughs> or my kin. And I said, we're going to date for about seven years. And that's what happened. <laughs> wow. Seven year relationship. Oh, heck you want to yeah. give him a shout out? No, no. Last time I did that, I got in trouble. <laughs> really? <laughs> Yo, shout out to somebody that wasted seven years of Lanny Wilson's life. Shout out to you, bro. <laughs> yeah. He's probably, he probably, does he have internet? Oh, I, I would think. Who what, knows? What goes on in a town full of 300 people? Like, is there a, like a Dollar General? The town over, there's a Dollar General. So in my town, <laughs> we've got a couple convenience stores. Okay. We've got a Caution Light, and we've got a bunch of cornfields. My daddy's a farmer. Yeah. I mean, like. How many acres does he farm? He farms 2,500. Corn. Um, corn, wheat, soybeans, oats. He was always putting us to work. So were you farming when you grew up? Like, did you learn how to farm? I mean, he wouldn't let me, like, plant. He would let me, like, drive the John Deere and, like, disc up the fields and stuff. He let me do stuff, basically, he knew I wasn't going to mess up. Yes. You That's know, he's so like, just get out there in that big field. tractors? Yeah. Do you ever do that when you go back home? Yeah, every now and then I do. There you go, yeah. He'll be like, Things a man look, know, look at that. Dang. I would mess that up. Oh, I mess it up, too. Like I said, <laughs> I, <laughs> I can do all these things. I didn't say good, though. Yeah, I would definitely mess that up, for sure. It's, uh, yeah. I can barely get my lawnmower started. Shit, man. It's not good. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, the farming to me, like Delaney started a garden. Obviously, it's not farming, but it's a big garden. I can't imagine. What y'all got? Shoot. Uh, this would be a good time to keep corn, tomato, tomato. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> literally, like, I don't know, a, a bunch of peppers, tomatoes, okay. like four different types of corn. Um, she'd probably be correcting me right now. Some Y'all got it all. Got some, like, purple cabbage lettuce yes. and then she's got like big tall sunflowers lining the garden she's got it now, all figured out do you out. tend to the garden or does she i i go out there and smoke a joint and walk around it and, and enjoy these are it dope. maybe like pick a tomato yeah. when they're ready right. i mean i is it is it till i tilled up the whole garden last year okay before we started it you know, on a rainy day i went and rented a tiller from home depot and came back and just and did busted the damn thing. my ass, got so pissed. Nobody asked me to do it. I just was like, Ugh, I'm doing I'm it. Telling pissed you. <laughs> myself off. Farming is hard. Yeah, I don't want to do it. It is like it Somebody's takes a special person. Yeah. How old is your dad? He's she. He's probably about to be sixty. Is this like? Uh, did he just pick up farming, or did his dad no? Farm? His daddy. I think. I believe my daddy is the fifth or sixth generation farmer. So, and then it stops after. I mean, after my daddy because. He just had two girls, and neither one of us are farming. She's an accountant, so. Oh, no. It's the end of the road. <laughs> it's the end, except my sister's husband, he's, like, farming a little bit of land and stuff, so maybe he'll take over the farm. That's awesome, though. It's I respect fun. it. I couldn't do it. Do y'all have water on the property? Like Yeah. Some irrigation. Yeah. And I bet it's a beautiful farm, though. It is. You have to come down there. Well, I've been, uh, I've played baseball in Louisiana, but I've never really. What part of Louisiana? Right outside of Baton Rouge. Okay. So know. I'm from like, Where's you look Baskin? at the boot, like the right top hand corner. I'm about 30 miles south. Does that touch Missouri? No, we're touching know. Arkansas and Mississippi. That's right. Dude, I don't know what maps look like. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I'm not good at maps. I just I put it. in a place and a blue line takes <laughs> yeah, me there. I get it. Um, 
So, you know what I mean, though? It's like, we're so dumb now. Like, I was thinking the other day, I was driving to Florida, and I was like, can I, I cannot imagine trying to get there off of, while like having an unfolded what map that's in my, heck no. My parents used to have almost knock down drag outs on family vacations because my mom would be reading directions from a map. From like Map Quest or something? Yeah, and like, <laughs> you know, Siri or whoever's always never quick enough to tell you when it's time to turn <laughs> and my mom is way worse than that it's like you were supposed to turn back there it's like well how Don't was you. i supposed to know <laughs> you know now you're mad at dad poor guy I had no idea you're supposed to turn back there now the family's fighting and i'm in the back just trying to play game boy advance which right. which i fell asleep <laughs> one time on a road trip and set my game boy advance like in the back pocket uh-huh. of the you know the passenger seat and um Went, fell asleep, woke up four hours later. Well, I had put the Game Boy Advance in a whole cup of water that was also in there, so fried my Game Boy. <laughs> Dear God. <sighs> oh, Lord have mercy. Just I had a, a, a leak in the trunk of my car. What and kind of car was this? It was, it was a Camaro. Oh, I was whipping. This is high school? This is high school. Okay. But the this story is actually crazy so we had a leak in the trunk of my car my daddy was trying to figure out where the leak was coming from and my like portable sound system was in the back because i used to not impersonate hannah montana oh my god <laughs> so all my like, gear at got ruined places oh yeah i would do like three or four birthday parties a weekend are you kidding me Hell no, I ain't kidding you. You can't make something like no, that. No, I know you can't. I, I mean, I, that was one of those courtesy, are you kidding me? I believe you. Yes. <laughs> I know yeah. you're not kidding. But how much you get paid for that gig? Like three or four hundred bucks a party. I mean. In high school? Oh, I was killing it. Back then? Back then? Back in the day? So, back in the day, that's so much money? Yeah. No, that's insane, though. And I would open up for Hannah. You would open up for Hannah. Like, I would open up for myself. But oh I, my I would God, be like, like... on some Chris Gaines, like... <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. So Lainey Wilson would come out and play some songs. Yeah, I'd be like, well, can Lainey make an appearance? And I'd be like, who? I'd be like... <laughs> oh, my God. So you're dealing with split personalities. Oh, yeah. That's why I messed up. <laughs> I get it. No, I'm the, I'm the same way. That's, That's what I did it. That's such a flex, though. Go, going and opening for yourself is yeah. awesome. I was like, well, I'm not going to leave here without them knowing my name, too. I mean, she. That's smart. So, that were you basically you were dead set on you're going to be an artist? You're oh, not farming. I'm going to be an artist. Yeah, I'm not going to be a farmer. No, I've always known. It's so weird. Like, my family took me on a family vacation to Gatlinburg when I was nine, and I had just written my first little do diddy type song. Yeah, it at was nine? like Britney Spears kind of song. Let's go. I was a cool kid. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was. Yeah. <laughs> but. They want a town full of 300 people guarantee you were the coolest. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> guarantee you were the coolest kid in town. Absolutely. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> That's amazing. But yeah, just always knew I was going to be here. And my parents took me on a vacation to Dollywood on the way home to Louisiana. We went through here and I've just knew. I even told my family, I was like, this is it. This is where yeah. I'm going to live. And they were like, Lainey, you nine years old. Like, what do you know? But I manifested it. Yeah, you did. Yeah. You were not wrong. I was not. You were going to talk about the leak in the trunk, though. Yeah, so. That's how we got there. Yeah, sorry. Back it up to the leak. Um. Anyway, my daddy was trying to figure out where the leak was coming from, and he lifted the carpet. And before the car was my car, it was a rental car. Uh-huh. And he found a big old handgun and a Glock, like a Glock and a banana clip <laughs> in the back of the car. Again, what car was it? A Camaro. Of course it was. Yeah. <laughs> and I've been driving back and forth like... Are we shocked? Yeah. Yeah. Dude. Of I, course. Yeah. Every, yeah. I think I'm Camaro pretty sure... Just come with yeah, that, Camaro, yeah. Yeah. Camaros I think, between I think it was a built in. and nine just come with a Glock yeah. with a banana yeah. extendo <laughs> clip. That's it should have. It should have. And, and just a little bit morphed purple dark window tint. It's like, oh, this has been here for 13 yeah. years. My daddy looks at me like... What in the world have you been doing? <laughs> so wait, so you purchased a car. Yes. And it had a Glock already in it. In it. Did we figure out who the owner? Was it a, were there serial numbers just yeah. gone? Well, no, the serial number was on there. Was it hot? I mean, it was uh so we took it to the sheriff's department. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll probably get in trouble for all this. Um and it belonged to a guy who was on the most wanted list. Wow. So and you're a rat. 
Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. No, so, so you're a little rat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so, you go, hey, you got farm equipment, dig a hole, dude. Just <laughs> dig a hole and you never saw it. I mean. So some guy on the most wanted list, now he's probably, did that ever get resolved? Did you know that that got resolved? No, it never got resolved. Good for him. Yep. <laughs> he's he long gone. Yeah, that's he's probably got a tracker on that car. That's crazy, yep. man. Oh, so always check the trunks of your. If anybody yes. goes and buys a Camaro used, yep. you never know. That's right. What's up, guys? It's Ern. I'm excited to announce the special edition. Just being earnest, callings have dropped. Get yours today. Cheers. Interesting. So, <laughs> oh my God, can is you that talk you? About how this Hannah Montana thing happened? Yes, I can talk about it. <laughs> Hannah Montana had the best of both worlds, bitch. <laughs> so Hannah Montana. <laughs> man, that was me back in my prom. Um, Look at you. My eighth grade teacher, Miss Poland. Are you on the right? I'm, just <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna whoop you. Yep. Um, Miss Poland was like, she was like, my little girl's having her birthday coming up. She said, if I buy you a wig, will you just like? show up to her party you look a little bit like hannah and i'm like okay i can do that and of course i was a overachiever so and i already had a portable sound system yes from like playing at nursing homes and stuff <laughs> that You're i um, hustling for, oh <laughs> before you were 10 years <laughs> old hustling, out here brother hustling, hustling. <laughs> and anyway i ended up going and buying the, the hannah montana karaoke track and i learned every song on there i put on a show on the flatbed trailer oh my and it gosh. spread like wildfire when i tell you for like Four or five years, I did this like this was your gig three or four parties a weekend, like consistently. Consistently, you were making bread, bread. Oh yeah, like was rolling. In were it. you doing this before you? Yeah, obviously you're doing this before you drive. So your mom's taking you to do to do this. Well, no. So I started. Well, <laughs> I was driving, driving when before. I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> well, yeah. Who, ca who cares, dude? There's more animals than people in your small town. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. I mean, except I was going to Mississippi, Arkansas. I was I was traveling <laughs> with a loaded Glock. <laughs> with a loaded Glock, <laughs> you get pulled over crossing crossing state lines with a hot weapon. Hannah Montana. Uh, <laughs> I ha I did get pulled over as Hannah Montana one time before you were sixteen. No, I was I was probably sixteen or seventeen. This is about year three in. <laughs> what'd you get, What'd you get pulled over for? I was speeding. I mean, gotta go, gotta go, gotta but go. But I turned it on, man. My like, I was crying. My wig was hanging on sideways. I'm like, I got. I'm late for a birthday party, ma'am. <laughs> ma'am, have you been drinking, <laughs> ma'am? You ha please tell me yep. you've been drinking. <laughs> yep. I was like, for real, I'm supposed to be at this birthday party. Please tell me. Like, he helped me find the directions, and because this was before we had GPSs on our phones. I'm saying, yeah. So I understand your mom and daddy. Like trying to figure out, you know, map quest, all that stuff. You're crossing state lines to go do birthday parties as Hannah Montana. Yeah. Underage. Underage. Like With a Glock. <laughs> yeah, more like Tony Montana. That's <laughs> dude, that's legendary. Yep. Yeah, you you're not gonna have many tougher gigs than that. Oh man. And the hardest part. Or nursing nursing homes are probably the toughest. I've played a couple to think this might be their last show is a lot of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, I, I, have, a, I have to. That's agree a gig. With that. They don't pay yeah. enough for the nursing home gigs. Yeah. Like Holy going out shit. with a bang. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can we turn these eight oh eights down just a little? <laughs> just a little. That was the hard part. Is like one day I'd be playing a nursing home, and the next day I'd be playing a two year old's birthday party. So it was like figuring out how to adjust. Two different crowds for yeah. sure. A lot of energy in the in the two to four year olds. Yes. Yeah, and. And when, when I used to go play, uh, I would do Sunday afternoons, like just an acoustic guitar sometimes here in Nashville at nursing homes. And um, yeah, not a lit crowd. It's a tough, definitely, <laughs> definitely, definitely like, definitely a tough new material crowd. Like, oh yeah, they want to hear Bean Crosby, yep. Frank Sinatra, and I'm not playing any of that. Yep. I'm going up there and playing songs I wrote that week in high school, and they're just looking at me with a blank stare like, <laughs> I'd rather be playing checkers. Dude. I would have loved to have seen you do that. Pretty good. I mean, I weighed, you know, 175 pounds, shaved head. Did they pay you to do it? Head, like 50 bucks. Yeah. 50 bucks, and my mom, you know, it was something to keep me out of trouble on a Sunday yeah. afternoon. That's a good way to do it. Between churches. Honestly, you could probably find more trouble at the nursing home than on the streets. Well, There's not, a lot of bad stuff that goes on in them places. Now that I'm older... <laughs> Uh, yeah, now that I'm older, you're raiding cabinets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Antibiotics. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't that. work. Yeah. No, but back then it was just, and there's that, 
You know, places that have distinct smells, the first one would be Goodwill. Oh, my God. A stench. A stench. <laughs> I stopped by Goodwill the other day and saw a shirt I liked and didn't buy it because I didn't like this. I was just like, the I, stench. I don't like I get it that it. much. Everything else I have in my life right now is pretty clean. Yeah. This shirt's going to mess up my whole closet. I get it. I get it. Goodwill, distinct smell. What else has a Subway. Dis Subway does. Oh. Yeah, it's a good Subway, thing. like those like little strip malls that have a Subway in it, everything smells like Subway. The mall in my town, well, in Monroe, has a distinct odor. I bet. <laughs> An odor. Like sawdust? Just. <laughs> <laughs> no, what, it's what, just stank. What was it? Um, all right, what's in the food court in the Monroe Mall? Um, Do you have a Sabaro? We did. I hadn't been there in years, so I don't know what's there now. We did have a Chick-fil-A. Yeah. So if we wanted to go to Monroe, it was like a 45-minute drive Yeah. Um, to go get some Chick-fil-A. But we do it. Chick-fil-A has been legendary. It has. How long has Chick-fil-A been around? Like, it feels so new, but it's always been like in my child, at least since middle yep. school. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, I think it's always been around, but I don't remember it being like super popular until I got to like middle school. Yeah. Yeah. I. Chick-fil-A is one of the most trustworthy places to go grab a quick it bite is. of all time. What's it say? No, you're bullshitting. It's been here since 1946. Allegedly. Dang. The internet says it. Monroe has two Chick Fil A's right next to each other. It's older that's than how McDonald's? busy it is. Is that what it just said? Yeah, McDonald's was 1955. Wendy's was 1969. We're being trolled. Chick Fil A hadn't been here since 1946. They wouldn't even think to have Chick Dash Filet in 1946. <laughs> well, answer ah, me chicken, this. Chicken sandwich right. spot. Hey, so it is it really the chicken that's that good, or is it the Chick Fil A sauce? The chicken's fire. Yeah, I don't even get the Chick Fil A sauce. I like the well, you know, at, sauce. Well, you know, at um, Kroger now, they're selling it by the jug. I know. I ordered uh, like a family-sized chicken nuggets the other day, and they brought one of those things with it. Big win for the home team. Because oh, I didn't shoot. even ask for it, and they just threw it in there. What a blessing. I love Chick-fil-A. And, um, yeah, I think we probably talked about this. Last, the My Pleasure thing is so annoying. <laughs> My pleasure. Um, but let's see, distinct <laughs> smells. Another one. I couldn't. I couldn't do pizza delivery. Can you imagine your car just reeking like pizza always? Actually, I might be okay with that. I love pizza so much. You, but that would be one way to not love it. I probably smell like pizza right now. <laughs> Did you eat pizza today? No, but I've eaten so much pizza in my life. <laughs> you just, you just <laughs> it just sweat comes out. Pizza. Yes. <laughs> gross. <laughs> That's yep. so gross. Okay, so <laughs> so I'm I'm gonna dig back in here. <laughs> Next, Hannah Montana. Yep. Started playing guitar at 11. Yep. And at what point, like, were you getting shows that weren't Hannah Montana? When did Lainey Wilson get her first gig? Well, I did like, well, my first like gig, I got paid twenty dollars to go sing a cappella down there at the new convenience store that was opening up in Baskin. S Mason Ramsey. <laughs> yep. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That was me. Um. But, like, throughout the whole Hannah Montana stuff, I was still, like, doing stuff for myself, too, uh -huh. and playing, like, the Franklin Parish festivals and, like you know, fairs and yeah, whatnot. fairs, anything like that, theaters, but Were you finally, playing and singing, or yeah. were you doing, like, karaoke for your own stuff as well? A little bit of both, because I had, you know, like I was talking about, my portable sound system. Right, you gotta have it. Gotta have it. You gotta have it. <laughs> I, um, I, like, brought my karaoke track and stuff like that, too, but and then I would, like, plug up and play, but finally... I mean, after I did that for five years, I was like, all right, it's time to like, we got to quit with the Hannah Montana thing. Also, mm -hmm. Hannah Montana was starting to kind of fizzle out yeah. that, you yeah. know, nobody, it was kind of like, you know, Barney came to my party when I was little. Yeah. And that was the big thing. So hung the wig up and decided. <laughs> <laughs> Hush. I love it. You're talking to both of yourselves. Like, we got to get rid of this <laughs> Hannah Montana thing. Hey, listen there. <laughs> Hannah responds. Yes. Like, no, not yet. No, don't take, no, don't take the wig up. No. <laughs> no, really, it was some good times, but it was time to hang it up. Yeah. So finally, after that, I started playing with a band out of like the Arklamas area, which is like Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi. Uh huh. They were called the Cadillac Kings. Oh, nice. And I was background singer, and they would let me pick up some lead, shake the tambourine, play acoustic guitar. Did yes. that for a couple years, and then finally decided at nineteen, I was like, if I'm really going do this thing for real i need to be in nashville so no college i did go to college we missed that part <laughs> yeah that's what i'm trying to so what, yeah where, where did college fit okay in this? so while i was playing with the cadillac kings i was like in class 
like going to school in class at ULM. Gotcha. And when I decided I needed to be here full time, I ended up buying a camper trailer and moving it to Nashville. I lived in it for the first three years I was here and finished college in it. That is amazing. Yeah, I got that general studies degree, boy. Look at you. And, and I don't know much, what I can do with that. that <laughs> Nothing. That's sick. So, I mean, the commitment to moving to Nashville and getting a stinking trailer. You lived in a trailer. I did. Was I it a nice trailer, though? It was a flagstaff. It was like a 20-foot bumper pool. I mean, it did have a shower, but I, like, flooded it at one point, then the floor started rotting out. Oh, God. I was always having problems with it. Found an AR under yeah. the Yeah, <laughs> and then I, then I lifted up the... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Another Glock. <laughs> yeah, like, Who are you buying your cars from? And we should go do a deep study on that location. <laughs> no, yeah. Lived in that thing for three years. Where is it now? Somebody that my daddy knows has it, but once he gets like finished living in it, because he's living you gotta in it. got to get full, it back. Yeah, I'm like, I'm going to buy it back. And trick it out. Yep. Yeah, that's going to, yeah, you definitely got to trick it out. have to sell merch or something out of it, meet and greet. Do you know where the Camaro is? No clue. No clue. Is <laughs> it impounded? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Some, Probably. Somewhere rusting? Uh, probably. Um. Okay, so you moved to Nashville. What were you doing, like, listening room rounds and all that stuff here? What What did you, who was your, um, I guess, your circle when you came in here? So, it's really weird because, so I moved here in August of 2011. Mm-hmm. And, um, okay, well, I mean, this year I'll be eight been here for 10 years which blows my mind yeah um, 10 year high school reunions this year won't go yeah <laughs> hey no hey hey guys yeah <laughs> you, know what I'm you know what i'm doing don't i mean if i know what you're doing we've been talking if we're not talking probably not gonna talk so yep right there with you <laughs> i don't even think i got invited to mine mine was last year so <laughs> yeah, there's no need social media has ruined the allure of a high school reunion it's yeah. like we all keep up on social media yeah I don't want to go have banquet drinks with people no. I didn't really rock with before. <laughs> Ain't happening. Yeah. Okay. So, what did you ask me? Who your uh, circle who my circle was? was. Yeah. So, when I had first moved here, I really didn't know a whole lot of people. Like, I wasn't old enough to, you know, go anywhere, do anything. Right. Um. You weren't twenty. You said you were nineteen. Yeah, I was right? nineteen. Yeah. So, there was a guy from my hometown. His name was Jerry Cupid, and. He had some success like in the 90s with like Ken Mellon's Kevin Sharp. Yeah. I remember, I'm just an old jukebox junkie spending my time. And oh, yep. Yep. And a crazy story. My daddy's daddy has always just like loved music, like just wanted to support it any way he could. So in the 70s, he gave Jerry Keep it like a few hundred bucks to like help him move to Nashville and get started. And as a favor in return, Jerry let me live in his studio parking lot for free. For those three years. That is so dope. So he was really my only contact that I knew. And he was, you know, he's really the one that like taught me how to write a song. And we would write every day. And we did that for a few years. And then he got sick and passed away. And then at that point, you know, I didn't really know anybody except for him. And really just kind of had to start over. Yeah. So that's when I sold my camper and was like, well, hell, I ain't leaving. Right. Like, we're going to have to figure this out. So I started over from scratch. Um, Really just kind of like started going on the road as much as I possibly could. And I feel like it really took me a long time to find like your group, my group. Mm -hmm. Finally, I guess it was about 2014 or so um, is when I met Luke Holmes. And I met him at Tin Roof off of Demumbrian and Mm -hmm. just remember like seeing him and being like, wow, this dude's got something special. So he would come over to my camper. We'd write. And it was really that crew. Um, who else? Like Drew Baldridge was a good friend of mine. Mm-hmm. Um, Ray Fulcher. Yeah. Um, those dudes. And who else, man? You're one of the guys, right? Like it was like yep. most of your group was probably dudes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Legendary. And then a few years after that, I really found like a group of girls who, you know, or just bad ass. Miss Mandolin. Miss Mandolin Monchick. Wake up. Yep. <laughs> oh, but you're watching, you're watching, I didn't. She's watching the live broadcast over here. I thought Wake you were up. zoned out. What year did I meet you, Mandolin? 2015. That's really when I found like my, my girl crew. Now I've got some really incredible, talented, like girl artist friends too. Yes. Like Ashlyn Craft. Yes. Love her. Such a badass. Yes. Casey Tindall, Megan Patrick. Yes. Yeah, Megan, I think, killed most of the deer on the wall that I posted 
in yep. my picture yesterday. I took that photo. I forgot I even took that photo at Mitchell's house. And um, I just was going through pictures trying to find something to post. I posted it. Didn't even think about the fact that I was in Mitchell's house. And Mitchell was so confused. Like, when were you at my house? <laughs> I was like, this was this was a while this was a while ago. I Today, I yeah, I mean, if if anybody that's incredible, Mitchell will tell you if anybody could just show up at Mitchell's house when he's not there, it's me. I've done it. I'll do it again. Um, but yeah, Megan probably killed most of those deer, huh? Mitchell, I, yes, all Mitchell the bigger ones. Fred. Mitchell's killed three deer, maybe. In his yeah, life. no, I think Correct she definitely wrong, got Mitchell. all the big ones. Yeah. Probably so. Meg, yeah. Megan knows knows some things a man ought to oh know. Oh, my gosh. If there's anybody who does, it's Megan Patrick. She has a dip in right now. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> she does, dude. She dips more than any of my dude friends. It's it's unreal. I mean, I'll it's tell you what. Her, I tell everybody it's this, but good like. For her. Good for her. <laughs> good for her. <laughs> <laughs> She'd fight a grizzly bear for me. She would. Let's line that up. Let's line it up. You find the grizzly. You find it. Let's, let's go ahead and schedule that. Yep. Um, she might win, too. Yeah, cheap fighter, probably. <laughs> have you killed any animals? I have killed a few. It was I feel like everybody I've had on this podcast has me. killed animals except for me. Well. What animals have you killed? Um, Deer. I grew up deer hunting. Um, You still hunt? Like, you go hunting every year? I don't. I don't hunt here. I've actually never hunted in Tennessee. But I would like to find me somewhere I could actually hunt. I do go home and do it like yeah. Christmas break or stuff. Like I don't get to do it a whole lot. Yeah. But it is a like it's a good time for me to be able to like hang out with my daddy and kind of bond with him and Yes. You know. Yeah, deer hunting I think would I think somebody was telling me the other day duck hunting would be the most fun cuz I've never duck hunted. Deer hunting I would just some two of restless legs and and get yeah. pretty bored and let's go somewhere. And if I'm sitting, I don't mind waking up early. I don't mind sitting in the cold. Yeah. But I like to be able to talk. And I know. Yeah. And well, when I was little, my daddy hated taking me because I was just like, dee, 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 dee. oh, I bet. Yeah. And he's like, Laney, you ain't never going to see a deer. So, but now that I've gotten older, <laughs> I can turn it on and off, believe it or not. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad it's on today. You're not making me, you're not making me do all the work here. Um, and I've killed dove. Me and my sister put on an annual dove hunt every year. Really? Yeah. So never, it's fun. Never been invited to that one. Come on. Uh, I done told you. Come on down to Baskin. I mean. I need to. And you know that bitch Carol Baskin killed her husband. <laughs> <laughs> now, every time I say Baskin, everyone's like, Carol? I'm like, hell no. Hell no. <laughs> Spring is on the way, which means long days with sunlight, which means more opportunities to be hanging with friends outside, doing some grilling or hanging by a fire. And if you're like me... Those good times may turn a little too good, make for a rough morning. Things changed when I found Goody's Hangover Powder. I can still have as much fun as I want at night with my friends, knowing that Goody's Hangover Powder has my back in the morning to get me on my feet and feel an alert. Goody's makes it super easy for me. I simply have to pour the powder in a glass of water, throw it back, and boom, fast pain relief's on the way. Goody's has hooked all of my listeners up with a discount code that you can use on Amazon. Use one off Ernest for a discount on six packages. Uh, <laughs> Tiger King, dude. Just <laughs> Can you believe that's been a year ago, by the way? Brought the country together. It brought did. the world it together did. in a it time did. where we needed it. Yep. At just at the expense of Joe Exotic. <laughs> it did. He, went, he was like so pumped celebrity and then got so much negative. Back. He goes, my life has been ruined because of Tiger King. I'm like, ah, your life's been ruined because of you. Yeah. It's just yeah. televised. <laughs> like, like, you ruined your life, Joe Exotic. You did it. Um, <laughs> I was so invested in that show. I think, is there, uh, Brantley Gilbert's in that documentary, or in Tiger King. I think it's Brantley. Is it? I think it's Brantley at one point, like when they're in a room in Vegas holding a baby tiger. It's either Brantley or like, it's one of those people. They didn't do anything wrong. They're just, <laughs> just holding the baby oh tiger. Gosh. I think it's Brantley though. It would be bad. I don't remember that. Yeah, you got to be looking, but there's like when they're just that showing pictures funny. of them at the hotels with white little baby tigers. <laughs> I think Brantley's one of them. Um, I want to I want to know more about this recording in a trailer though. Were you recording in the trailer or you were just parked in the studio parking lot and going in the studio? Going in the studio. Yeah, so I was like I was like 20 feet from the building like I was hooked up to the studio, like the brick building to get like oh, yeah, water, Wi Fi, electricity, all that. So they were letting me bomb that for years. And God, it was, tight. everybody wanted to come to my house. I yeah, mean, I like, bet. that was a place to hang. And except 
when you know bad weather would roll through. That yeah. was. Would you did it have like a awning? Like, could you set it up with chairs and yeah. stuff? Did you get some fake astroturf outside? I didn't get fake astroturf, but should I was literally just sitting in like a grass field, like a pasture. So I had my little fire pit going. And where is this? This is you know where McKay's bookstore is. Yes, I do. Right in behind there. Like, if you take that exit and you go right, and there's a little elementary school right there. Yeah. There's a road that runs along, like, next to it. It's called Tidwell. Yes. And it's, like, right in behind there, and that's where I parked it. I know exactly where that is. We go to Green Door Gourmet that's out that way. Free little shout-out. Green Door Gourmet is, like, it's a farm grocery store, farm-to-table grocery store, little... Okay. All super, like, they... All the eggs are there. All the plants and vegetables are all grown on the farm. I like that. It's good. Remind me. You'll have to remind me in just a little bit. What I will. Called. Green Door Gourmet. Love it. Um. Okay. So you signed a record deal with Broken Bow. I did. At but what point? And yeah, you got more to the story. Yeah. So lived in my camper for three years, moved out, said, this ain't the end for me. I ain't leaving. Mm -hmm. I've really never had a plan B. Yeah. You know, I mean, I feel like if you, if you do this, you can't. And um, even though I got that general studies degree. Yeah. Just <laughs> Just in case you ever need to fall back, you do have a general <laughs> That's studies right. Degree. Dang it. <laughs> so it wasn't until year seven of being here that I, I signed a publishing deal with Sony ATV. That was my first pub deal. Really? Yeah. Tom Luteran. Love that. Love yeah. that. Yep. I guess was Troy still there? Troy the, was still there. Yeah. Yep. Terry Wakefield. Yeah. And signed with those guys. And it was just, to be honest with you, it was really hard for me to like figure out how to get my foot in the door. I didn't know where to start, who to talk to, like anything. I just I just figured that maybe like through my songwriting that would kind of open doors. Yes. And um that's a good way to be because like I get asked all the time from people like how how do I get in the and I don't have a good answer yeah. for that. Um the song if you if you write good songs. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you'll end up at the right place at the right time. That's right. Yeah. And that's what happened to you it sounds like. Yeah. Well, yeah. so in 2014 or 15, I guess, Luke Combs ended up cutting a song of mine that we wrote together called Share If You Want To. Yeah. And, but that still didn't get me a publishing deal, you know, and he was really starting to kind of pop off and mm -hmm. started doing well. And I'm like, well, okay, like, just I just got to keep my head on, like, just sh screwed on straight, blinders on, just do the damn thing and just keep trucking along, I guess. I didn't know what to do. Yeah. Just don't give up. Yeah. And so I got put in that um, ASCAP program, mm -hmm. the GPS program, where they basically, you know, kind of like set you up with some writers and I mean, some like publishing meetings in town Yeah. and did a few of those. But I ended up actually just getting my publishing deal through writing with somebody over at Sony. And then um, it was Shane Miner. Yeah. Shane Miner texted Troy and was like, if you don't give this girl a publishing deal. You can take my away. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so because people stuck their neck out like that for me. Yeah. And kind of spoke on my behalf, but um, got to have champions. You got gotta, to got to have a champion just to get like the foot. That that would be my answer is how to get in. It's like get write good songs, and then you'll get lucky and have a champion yep. that gets your gets you in the first door. Yep, the, the first rest, door. The rest is up to you. Yes, but yeah, little help getting in the first door goes along. Yep. The Warren Brothers were that for me. Really, yeah, love those boys. I just wrote with them not too long ago. Yeah, they're they're that's, awesome. They're family to me. They they took me into Sony ITV and really the, the rest is uh, that's incredible. Yeah, no, I love them. They're good people. Yeah, they are. So about six or so months after signing my publishing deal is when they were like pitching my music, you know, to some labels for female artists and stuff. And through that, people heard my voice and songs. And then I started having some label meetings. Yeah. And ended up signing with BMG Broken Bow about six or so months after signing my publishing deal. And it's been wild ever since. That's so cool. What year was this? Was this 2018? 2018. And, and you can just put a whole blank through 2020. That year yeah. didn't count. So you've really only had a deal for two years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the the timing of everything as far as like, there's obviously quicker success stories than others, but like there is no overnight success. Oh my gosh. The the grind you got to put in, the times you got to get turned down, the like yep. 
getting that close to giving up is usually when you got to keep going because oh my gosh. right on the other side of that is where you'll have your breakthrough. You're right. Then it'll suck again and you just got to keep That's going. Right. Like it's just a series of waves. Life in this industry and I, you know, probably every industry, life is just going to be hard and when things be. are going good. They probably won't yeah. stay great. Yeah. But it's keep, just learning how to, you know, like it's it's scary to get too excited about things. Yeah. You know, because when you get let down, you get let down. Yes. So it's like just kind of having like a, a happy medium. Yeah. Yeah. The being being an optimist is tough in this industry and you almost have to be because the other side is being jaded pessimist, which That's right. I can teeter with sometimes. Yeah. Um but the energy you can bring to the room when you're positive about stuff is going to attract no, more positivity. You're right. And I can't imagine my life with, without this town. I mean, the people here are truly my family. Yeah. Like, I mean, thank God for music because it really has introduced me to some of my most favorite people yeah. on the face of the earth that I can't imagine my life without. Same. Yeah, Nashville is special. It's magic. I mean, no matter how big it gets with everybody moving here and all that, yep. the heart of Nashville, which is... This street we're on and, right. you know, this three mile radius is truly magical. It is. People come here from all across the world and some of them get to make that dream happen and come true. And then Isn't that crazy. And then somebody 20 years from now will get to look at our story yeah. and have faith that they can do that. And uh -huh. that's fucking awesome. Tim McGraw was that for me. Yeah. Because he grew up in Start, Louisiana. So Tim McGraw was your I can get it out. Of, I can get out of this town. Yeah. Yeah, you know, everybody's got to have one of those. Yes, and he was that for me. Yeah, I just have you met him? I have not met him. I have not met him. Well, he was my first concert. Hey Tim, here he is. Yeah, <laughs> ah! Tim, the maintenance guy. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Do you need me? Yeah, you got need a barbecue somebody? stain on your white t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> somebody had something about a white t-shirt barbecue stain on him. No, I hadn't met him, but my step grandmother used to babysit him. That's a good quote. Yep. Yep. Quote that. <laughs> My step grandmother used to babysit Tim McGraw. <laughs> She's like, yeah, I used to change his ass. So maybe I'll change two stars. Asses. Change his ass or his diaper? <laughs> Tim McGraw. They, they Tim say McGraw's had 14 ass. asses put on him this past month. That's hilarious. Dude, I'm going to, before I spank my son, I'm going to say, boy, I'm about to change that ass for good, dude. That, that ass ain't ever going to be the same when I get done with it. By the way, when is he going to be here? Uh, May 1st. And that's a lovely spanking, by the way, not an yeah. abusive spanking. <laughs> a love tap. Yeah, love tap. <laughs> uh, May 1st is what the what they're saying is the due date, and you never know. That is exciting. So, any day now. Any day now. I'll, I'll probably... Well, this episode comes out next week, right? I could be having a baby any yeah. minute now, yeah. if you're listening. My sister's supposed to have her baby on April 28th, so... Really? It's a little boy. I was hoping... Uh, if it's going to be early, I would love a 420 baby. <laughs> yep. You know, for and no other reason early. than That's, 420 yeah. is a good little date. Yep. It's a good date. A good date. Um, So was Tim McGraw your favorite artist or was that just your biggest inspiration to get out of town? Like, who, was, who were you listening to other than Hannah Montana? <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> so, of course, yeah, Tim McGraw was like the person I was like, wow, if, if he could do it, maybe I could. Yeah. Um. So... Definitely grew up listening to everything 90s country. I yeah. mean, love me some Leanne Womack. Yes. But I love, I mean, like Dolly Parton. Yeah, Dolly Parton is like what my mama would play in the kitchen. Hank Williams is what my daddy would play on the tractor. Like, you know, Buck Owens, Glenn Campbell. My yes. daddy plays a little bit of guitar by ear, so mm -hmm. he would play Rhinestone Cowboy. You know, the one little lick he knew yes. <laughs> over and over again. It, so it sounds like you didn't really have a choice. You're going to be a country girl and... Didn't have a choice. Didn't have a choice. Well, really, like for me and my family, country music was... I didn't even realize it, it was a genre. You didn't realize there were other genres. Yeah, you, I was this like, is just this music. is it, you know? I love that music exists. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just, <laughs> really. This is such a cool thing that exists. Yeah, I mean, and we lived it. the first time. What yeah. is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Yeah, It's no like a clue. time machine. It was wild. But we lived out those words and lyrics and, you know, I mean, coming from such a, like, blue-collar area, that's really, like, all we knew. Oh, yeah, and, I mean... Like I've said in the last couple episodes, I've been on an old school country kick lately. Mm -hmm. And 
it's just so obvious that country music is made for back roads in small town. Like when you're driving mm-hmm. through, when you're driving on a two lane road through the middle of nowhere, listening to George Jones, yep. you're just like. Oh, this makes perfect sense. That's right. I wouldn't be listening to George Jones in New York City. I'm probably yep. listening to Sinatra. Yeah. And looking I have at things realized, through a black though, and white filter on my phone. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you hear the birds chirping? That's because flowers are blooming and the grass is growing. And it's time to mow your freaking lawn, dude. Thanks to our sponsor, Manscaped, you can trim the hedges below the belt safely and efficiently. And I'm talking about ball trimmers. That's right, ball trimmers. Spring has sprung and Manscaped has the best tools to get you ready. I recommend their Perfect Package 3.0. Package comes with the Lawnmower 3.0, which has a ceramic blade to reduce shaving accidents. Crucial. The package also includes the Crop Preserver and Crop Reviver to have you uh to have your nether region smelling and feeling so so great. And I mean great. Lastly, the package comes with the travel bag and boxer briefs. You think what I'm thinking? That's right. This is the perfect package for your package. Jinx. <laughs> Just kidding. Not really. Um, I used to nick my nuts all the time. It was really a tragedy. Y'all wouldn't believe it. It was a battle every time I tried to do some self-grooming. But then Manscaped joined my team, and I win the self-grooming game every time. It's not even close. Sometimes I just walk around with the lawnmower 3.0 just for fun because I like it that much. Um, join the other 2 million men who trusted Manscaped. They're here to make sure your balls are smooth and smelling nice. I like it when two other million men are in charge of my balls being smooth and nice. Don't you? After all, it's time for spring cleaning. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code EARNEST20. Hey, that's 20% off of free shipping with the code EARNEST20. EARNEST20 at manscaped.com. It's spring cleaning, baby, and your balls will thank you. There really are rednecks everywhere, which I blew my mind when I started traveling around. Upstate New York has some red rednecks. Yes. Redneck, redneck women. I'm just talking about like girls who look like they could whoop your ass. Just yeah. like where? Lumberjack. Where's the most redneck place you've been that ain't your hometown? Mm. Like on the road. Man, let me think about that. Mine's Roanoke. Oh, Is that West Virginia, my. Roanoke, West Virginia. Oh my god, or? I was about to say Morgantown, West Virginia. Yeah, maybe around there. Stayed at a Super Eight. Pretty sure I slept on a syringe. Not yep. too sure about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'll never Redneck. forget the smell. Like the smell of another distinct, another smell, distinct smell, dude. And Compton will say extended stays. Yeah. Dude. Hey, what do y'all put in the air vents at extended stays? Two people. You probably don't want to know. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, well, I said they don't change them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that's, oh, it's so gross. I can I smell wanna... it thinking about it right now. And like Ooh. nothing smells worse than a room that has just had who knows what smoked in it for <laughs> so many days in a row. Mm. And it doesn't face. smell like cigarettes. Yeah, you can't put your finger on Definitely it. Definitely in weed. What is it? Meth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the smell of meth. meth. That's the smell of meth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, bro, the shit ain't sweet, cuz. I've always wondered. West Virginia got that got that crank. crank they do. Dude. They do. It was something. Yeah. Um, what are you listening to now, now that you know that there's other genres? Are you still pretty much just... Uh... <laughs> of course, I mean, mostly country. But I also love, like, I call it my morning music. I've been listening to a lot of, like, Lake Street Dive, um, Alan Stone. Like that's I love like, Alan Stone. I just... It's a vibe. Love Alan Stone. Do you like Teddy Swims? Yes, and I've never met him, but... How did we, you not meet him? Just here? everybody for the last I know, two weeks. Because they've been having my ass busy. When I tell you, like, yeah. we've been running around. No, I get it. Um, But next time he's here, I'm sure we'll... He's we'll so good. Out. He just, golly, yeah. he can sing. Unreal. Yep. And he's such a sweet guy. I'm going to have yep. him on the podcast. Teddy Swift. Yes. Yeah. We, we, were, uh, we were, like, riffing on this idea of him doing a character called... Like as a rapper, it'd be called Baby Talk, and like it's just like hard ass beats with like Goo Goo Gaga, like like just the dumbest. Oh shit. my god! Um, Which he was he here writing? He wrote with uh, Dallas too, right? This, wrote, week, this yeah, past wrote, week, yeah, yeah. And then me, him, and Durrett wrote. Gotcha. Um, we got a pretty cool song. Heck yeah! It's like a strip club love song. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, can't go fall in love with strippers. Oh, I love that. They don't like you, okay? They don't. <laughs> hey, the stripper doesn't like you, okay? <laughs> she just wants your money. Buy That's her right. a Red Bull. Re- buy, <laughs> buy her a Red Bull. Send her on her way. Um, 
Okay, Crazy. yeah. So Alan Stone was probably one of my bigger inspirations right out of high school. Like really? I was heavily inspired by a lot of music. But another formative batch of years would have been like 18 to 22 year old. Mm -hmm. And like Dave Barnes, Matt Wirtz, Alan gotcha. Stone, Bet I Made. The the song Bet I Made, uh, or is that it? I took a sign over the stars. It didn't get me very far. Oh, but all my troubles follow yeah. me. That guitar progression uh, is one I just always played. And it ended up morphing into Sugar. Really? My song Sugar, the dun, dun, yes. dun, dun, dun. That's pretty dang cool. If, uh, will you hand me that guitar behind you? I've been yep. using the guitar lately in the podcast, but who knows what key, what tune shape we're in here, but I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's see here. Maybe like, uh... So the Alan Stone song, I think, is like... Mm -hmm. Yep. I took a plane over the stars It didn't get me very far Cause all my troubles follow me mm -hmm. So I always play that on guitar And then yes. I uh, uh, And then we got sugar going At a little canteen south of the border Wow Bartender messed up an order Yeah, dude So it, it That is pretty sweet I'm not trying to give away writer's credit here I'm just <laughs> telling you how I got point A to point B Alright Everybody does it You gotta Everybody. use what you like That I think I learned a lot of phrasings from that Like Me and Jacob use that all the time Mm-hmm Dun, dun, dun Fun little ditty, huh? Wow Anyways that's pretty sweet, man. Hey, thanks. I just wanted to prove I can play guitar. Yeah, yeah. You want to bring That's it out all, like... I just wanted to, I just wanted to <laughs> Now prove. it's like, let me see what you got. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> dude, play... Uh, Hannah, all right, here. Here's a fun fact about Hannah Montana. Oh, gosh. Um, uh, my next door neighbor from like eighth grade till senior year of high school, her name is Lily Truscott, and her dad wrote the character into Hannah Montana okay. in the pilot episode, Lily Trescott, who's Hannah Montana's best friend in the show. Lily. Lily. Wow. So she's named after my next door neighbor. That's Isn't that cool? Wow. That's wild. Yeah. So I'm telling you, I can't get a, I can't get away from Hannah Montana. <laughs> Yo, it hey. surrounds me everywhere. No, it's great. Uh <laughs> no, nobody can. Ooh, this is also random and great, dude. Chet, uh, Chet Hanks, Tom Hanks' son. Okay. You know anything about him? No. You're about to find out. Tell me. So Chet Hanks is a legend. He, I guess he's just like, thinks he's from Jamaica sometimes, <laughs> but like, he's just like a total like city boy. And he's been referring to, he's going to make this summer a white boy summer and like, Douche, like a douche, but you look, dude, look at the video. You got oh, yeah, it. It'll make this. sense. Like, and, and, uh, I think it was either Chris or Matt D'Elia made a great point that it would be so different if it was white man summer, but <laughs> he's so much more lame, but it's white, white boy summer. Watch this shit, dude. <laughs> oh, now getting a little audio. What in the world is this about to be? You'll see. It's a genre called rap. <laughs> Never heard of it. <laughs> I swear to God, man, as soon as you get a bag, these bitches want to take it from you. Take it from As soon as you get a bag, dude. Fuck it. Turn it up, the beat on my headphones. Just a little bit. Get yeah. those Just things off. Bit. Yeah. White boy summer. I met a bad little shorty on the powder dance, getting to the back like it was a chance. Rich bitch, no one up with them bands. Wait Said fuck it, then she went and made her only fans. Uh, hot boy, white boy summer. Got your favorite Instagram <laughs> bitch. <DM in> <laughs> Hit the strip club, I'm like, right, here comes. She let me beat it. I'm a white boy wonder. Uh, bad gal, white dandada. Rude boy, it's a white boy summer. Huh? Bad gal, white dandada. Whoa, Jesus. Rude boy, it's a white boy summer. That's it. That's it. Anyways. Jesus. Dude, it's fixing to be a white boy summer. Dude, I don't know if you, I don't know if you that can tell That sounds terrible, or not. honestly. It is about to be a white, a white boy <laughs> it summer. It sounds like a terrible summer. Just like. <laughs> I feel like we've had enough white boy summers lately. It's probably time for something else. 
Spice it We've up. ruined this as much as we possibly can. Let's go ahead and let somebody else take over. And I'm definitely not letting Chet Hanks be the fucking spokesperson yeah. for white boys this summer, okay? <laughs> Like we we need a way better representative. We've ha- we've been poorly represented already. That's right. Please get, get on out, of here. out of the white boy get. summer <laughs> spotlight. <laughs> Boop. Bad gal. <laughs> yeah. Just Bad gal. just born in North North LA, North Hollywood. Lived a super lavish life. Decided fuck it. I'm trapping, dude. <laughs> like dear lord. I've had friends that grew up like that. I mean, I don't know. Some people just want to trap. Grew up in I think nice I should. homes in Brentwood. Nice rich family I said, I I'm moving to Antioch. I'm doing it. You're going to do it? Yeah. You're going to start now? <laughs> you now got the, the cars. I got it. I got, <laughs> got it. Let's go. Bop, bop, bop. Bop, 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 White girl summer, dude. <laughs> that also sounds terrible. <laughs> that does. I de- it sounds worse than <laughs> white boy summer, time. honestly. It's yeah. like, okay. Yeah. It's going to be. Sounds uh, boring. There's going to be a lot of matching <laughs> outfits this summer, dude. It just reminds me of a bachelorette party or something. I think Broadway. Yeah. Well, Nashville is just. Oops, dude. I can't. Man. I'm I telling can't. you. I can't. I can't. I drive around. They're everywhere. I drive around sometimes and just make a loop. Mm-hmm. I'll go like uh, through the gulch, loop around, and then hit Broadway, like just Union, and just do a loop. Like I basically will pull out next to the rhyme and take a ride up Broadway and then head back this way. And just to watch the chaos. It is chaos. It's chaos. And it's, it is also like... Uh, it's encouraging to see that these people, these are these are our fans. Yeah. They're ready to party. They are ready. No, there's no <laughs> doubt about it. Please let there be a party because they're going. I'm talking about, I was driving through here the other day trying to get to Megan Patrick's birthday at Losers, oh. and there was a tornado going on, and people were still on those dang tractors just riding around just like nothing was going on, just like... Natural selection. I couldn't say much. I was going to losers, so. <laughs> oh yeah, well, but you weren't on the back of a fucking. <laughs> but I was like, they're stupid, and I'm like, Laney, <laughs> you need to take your ass home too. <laughs> yeah, you're you're also going to losers in yeah. a tornado. Yeah, Mitchell was like, well, I'll tell you what, if we're going out, like, of I'd rather course. be at losers. Of course, that sound. <laughs> yeah, Mitchell Tenpenny, dude. Shout out Mitchell. <laughs> oh, That's my brother. Do you see the tattoo he got? No, did he just get it? Yeah, he got his whole arm tatted up insane. Bubba Mathis did it, and it's like super detailed owl with like turquoise. I mean, I hadn't seen it. It's a lot. It's a lot of tattoo. Wow. Yeah. Like the entire arm. From the elbow up. All right. I don't know why you would care. I just <laughs> I'm talking about Mitchell, and that's a little. I'm just fun trying fact. to visualize it. Well, here, look at it. I'll here. show you. Let they me can, see it. Can, no, he's got it. Yeah, there you go. Oh uh, my gosh! That it's uh t- in the left one with the blue. There it is. Yeah. Wow. The Batman building with freaking an owl. Oh my gosh! Oh uh, yes. Yeah, I have not seen that. That's on Mitchell's arm. All right. Crazy man. Get it, Tim Penny. You always used to dream of getting tattoos, and now it's nice to see those dreams starting to come true. I don't have one. You don't? Not one. You ever gonna get one? Maybe we'll see. We'll see what happens. Have you ever come close to getting a tattoo? No. Really? I mean, it had to be something real. Just like, I've got to have this tattoo. You wouldn't even just get like a stick figure on your ankle Get like a little Playboy bunny on my ankle or something. Yeah, but it would be funny if like the bunny had like a carrot in its mouth. Just yeah. like make it make make it a little little cool. A little different. Had a wig on. Hannah Montana wig on it. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Best of both worlds down my leg. Wrapped around my <laughs> some barbed wire, some shit. Like a bad font, best yeah. of both. Like thick block <laughs> font, best of both worlds. Like stick poke prison tat, best of both worlds. I don't have one. I might do it. Maybe today. Today would be, why don't you just get the Just Be an Earnest logo tattooed? Just Be an Earnest, right there. <laughs> yeah. What'd you do today? Uh, did the podcast and went ahead and got it tatted, so. <laughs> I'd be down with that. Somebody needs to get a Just Be an Earnest tattoo in the world. If you're listening, get a Just Be an Earnest tattoo and send me your pictures. I dare you. I, I dare, dare you. I dare you. you. There's somebody Double out there dog. that's going to do it, for sure. Or, be I think somebody's already gotten my flamingo tattoo, but I... Let's nut up and do a whole thing. Let's do a big back piece. Just how many honest. tats you got? Um, <sighs> Sorry to put you on the no, spot. No, I mean it's like I, I made that sound like I was going to say like <laughs> seventy two. I got like four or five tattoos. I'll probably get a couple more. Yeah, I, I, I like them. 
they're addicting as fuck. Yeah. Everybody says they're addicting, but it yep. is true. As soon as you get one, you're like, you oh, this feels one. good, and I like it, and there's so much more room to fill up. <laughs> That's pretty much the thought process yeah. of it. It's like the first one I got when I went to college, I got this one, but I got it in white ink because my parents were going to kill me if I got if, a tattoo. Yeah. So I just wanted to feel that, you know. Yeah. Feel it. Yeah. <laughs> so I went to I went to this little tattoo shop in Jackson, Tennessee. Shouldn't have been there. And uh got a white ink tattoo. Parents finally found out. Could you even see it? Uh yeah, when I was like in this I mean, at this yeah. time in my life, I was in pretty good shape and didn't wear a shirt all the time. Now I'm in terrible shape and hardly ever wear a shirt. So but that <laughs> but that but that but that middle that middle ground was like, oh, gotta cover up. Yeah. Forget that, dude. We love it. <laughs> We love, love it. it. Love um, it all. But once my parents saw that I had a tattoo, I went and just got it covered with ink. And then I got a Tennessee skyline. And then I got Delaney's name tattooed here like two years before we even got engaged. I'd already told her I was going to marry her. And then I love that. I found a $100 bill on the ground one night in the gas station parking lot. And wow. um, we went to Two Boots and got two slices of pizza. I went to Blackbird Tattoo and got her name tattooed. Wow. Yeah. And uh, that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. And it was, that, again, I was always trying to justify a reason to get tattoos. Like, how can you be mad at this, mom? It's, yeah. it's a Bible verse. And how can you be mad at this? It's yeah. your name. So, <laughs> you know. Uh, Do you ever call her Laney? No. Delaney. Just Delaney. Is it D-E-L-A? D-E-L-A-N-E-Y. And D or Delaney. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if we've ever, pet names we haven't really had for each other. Yeah. Um, the first names we were in each other's phone. She was demon child in my <laughs> phone, and I was do not text in hers. <laughs> Sounds uh, about right. This is while she had a boyfriend. Oh, um, so it made sense. But did y'all date like way back in the day? Uh, I yeah, well, yeah. I mean, she was a senior in high school when I met her, and I just dropped out of my freshman year of college. Gotcha. So when I met her brother, we were I was basically living at their house before. Like gotcha. she was still dating another dude and I was living on the couch yeah. making music with her brother and But you know she is one smoking joints with her dad while she was at school and me and her dad rode together to her uh senior high school graduation and at Harpeth Hall, which if you know about Harpeth Hall, it's like an all girl super preppy school here in Nashville. Uh -oh. And me and her dad, he was like, you know, <laughs> seventy five years old, hippie, coolest dude, and we're sitting there and waiting on the R's and it's like, you know, C or D and I was like you trying to go smoke? <laughs> and he's like, yeah. So we take her Jeep. We take her Jeep and we're rolling around like the back roads of Green Hills, smoking a joint and That's come incredible. back just in time to watch Delaney walk across the stage. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Which I'm sure made it a lot more enjoyable because those dang high school graduations oh are just like, come goodness. on. This was probably pretty quick, though. Oh, yeah. Mine was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. everybody <laughs> at one time. Everybody at once. And you know what? Everybody can clap now. So <laughs> my, right. my diploma had no paper in it. There was no diploma. It was just a folder. And then I had to go to summer school and earn the diploma. <laughs> Before earn was even a pun. <laughs> then it was just something and I had to do to it. graduate. <laughs> that is funny. Me undies. Me undies believes that comfort is about more than what's touching your skin. It's about feeling comfortable in your own skin. That's why I rock me undies. They allow me to express myself and stay comfortable in their product that is so, so soft. Hey, you know when you rush home to change into something a little more comfortable? That's MeUndies. It's like they pull the clouds from the sky and spin it right into underwear, socks, bralettes, and loungewear. You can choose from endless styles and sizes extra small to 4XL. Uh, the sustainability and micro model, micro model, new words, doesn't matter. And new ultralight breathe fabrics are so comfy and well breathable, so you can move free or not. It's up to you. MeUndies has a great offer for my listeners. For any first-time purchasers, you get 15% off and free shipping. MeUndies also has their problem-free philosophy. If you're not satisfied with any product for any reason, they'll refund or exchange it. No questions asked. To get your 15% off your first order and free shipping, go to MeUndies.com slash earnest. That's MeUndies.com slash earnest. Um, do you know what your GPA was in college or in high, high school? school? A three, eight and Jesus Christ. in high school. Like I did not what was the criteria. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I mean, look, <laughs> <laughs> let's just not talk about it. <laughs> yeah, a three, eight. Yeah. <laughs> I can't, I can't fathom having a three, eight. Well, and then in college I did really well. I had a three, eight. 
My blood like, alcohol content's three. Yeah, in. <laughs> I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. But then my last freaking semester, you have to take like a graduate exit like class. Uh-huh. And I accidentally did the master syllabus instead of the undergrad. And my class was on death and dying. Oh, wow. And so I wrote a 12 page paper instead of a like two page paper and she failed me. So my GPA went from a three, eight to a three, two. I'm still pissed at that teacher. But you did more work. Yes. And the- she was like. Well, you didn't follow instructions and ask Mandolin, do I follow instructions on anything? No. Mm-hmm. She's no. like, hey, you need to do this liner. And somehow I'll mess it up and be like. <laughs> no, I'm, I mean, I, that's, that's me, too. I was a big I was big on like, uh, you know, the whole class gets a quiz and I'm seeing people going to turn it in super fast. And I'm like, no way. I'm the last <laughs> one to turn. I'm the last one to turn it in. But the reason everybody's turning in because the first fucking thing on the thing was like, you don't have to answer any of these questions. Just put your name on, turn it in. But I don't read that. I just go straight to the questions. Who does that sound like? Me. 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 Oh. <laughs> it's literally me. No, I'm telling you. <laughs> like, it could be the first thing in bold at the top of the thing that says, do not say this. Yeah. And that's what I say. <laughs> yeah. And that works both ways, too. I'm likely to say something if I see I'm told not to say it yeah. as well. It makes it way harder. I'm telling you, you know how many times I've had to just like redo simple things? How many? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Let me think about this. Yeah. yeah. That's how it was growing up on yeah. the farm, too. Yeah. Daddy would make me wash his uh, horse trailer and truck. Anything worth doing is worth doing right. Uh, you're right. Yeah. So <laughs> she just flashed back. Yeah. yeah <laughs> literally. I feel like you're daddy. Is that you? <laughs> daddy? Dad? <laughs> but he made me wash his truck and trailer like five different times all on the same day. Like, not just like spray it off with a water hose again. Like, Mr. Me, the entire thing. He's like, do it right the first time. You won't have to do it again. And I still have not learned that lesson. <laughs> Yeah, that also seems like how many how many times do you need to clean it before it's not cl- before it's clean? You know, yeah. There was probably three times that you cleaned it that day that didn't need to happen. Oh, exactly. So what's he calling? What's I'm telling. Calling well, a bad because I, then I went and like I went dry it right or something like a black truck. Of course, he had to have a black truck mm. to where you could see all the. That's right. No, that's true. That's a good point. I wax mean, on, wax off. So you're probably pretty good at karate, huh? (laughs) (laughs) You'd be the third guest I've kicked. I'm telling you. (laughs) I kicked Jordan Davis in the shin the other day, and I I texted him on the way home. I was like, I don't know why I did that. I'm sorry. (laughs) I I just needed to do it. He's so thrown off by it, too. He's looking at you like, wait, are we fighting right now? No, yeah. No, it was a tough read on my part. (laughs) You don't want to fight. It was a a friendly kick, but I think I might have caught him in the tibula or whatever. (laughs) Because <laughs> have we have you seen the footage of it? Oh no! Did I kick him pretty hard? <laughs> oh no! He's such a nice guy. I didn't mean. I'm so sorry, Jordan. It. I'm so sorry. Do it. I don't even remember why. There was literally it. nothing around it that made sense. There was no intro, <laughs> outro. It was like he might have been mid sentence, and I just kicked him in the shin. I love that. I love just like whacking people on the back real hard. That yeah. came out of nowhere. I also love chasing my roommate Casey Tindall around the house like this. Oh my god! Don't do <laughs> Scaring that. Scaring her. <laughs> please don't. No, please fucking stop. <laughs> I'm about to get up and do it to you. <laughs> no, don't do that. Don't do that. God, what face is that? I was a. It's a weird. When was one. the first time you did that, and you're like, "This is the one." <laughs> <laughs> Who told you that was the one? Myself. Okay. Hannah Montana, bitch. You know. <laughs> Hannah Montana, bitch. Let's go. She said that's the one. <laughs> um, you can bleep bitch out on, when I, for what I'm about to say, but I definitely want to come out with <laughs> the song Things a Bitch Ought to Know. <laughs> <laughs> There's a long list. You, fucking, uh, you can feature on it with me. <laughs> I know if you say I'd be in so much trouble if I dropped Things a Bitch Ought to Know in this climate. Oh, my God. Oh, no. I'd love it. It would only work is if you did it with me. Yeah, I'll do it with you. All right. Hey, I got envelopes if you want to help me push them. Hey, come on. Let's push them. All right. Push uh, Exhaust? Um, <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, I have to get back to the studio to do my other job. Okay. Thank, thank you so much. No, thank you. No, thank you. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. And please don't chase me out of the studio with that. I'm, I probably will. Look. 
I'm going to have nightmares. This is fun. It was fun. We should do it again. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. Well, this Come is uh, this is Lainey Wilson on Just Being Earnest. We'll see you a little, a little later. A little, a little later. I might have a baby next time I see you guys. Oh, you will. All right. Just being earnest. Just being earnest. Just being earnest. Just being earnest.